Having recognized the vocal ability of the band, Phil Wainman invited Brian, Mick and Steve over to his flat to put their vocals on what would become the demo version of Funny Funny, a track penned by the newly formed writing partnership of Nicky Chin and Mike Chapman. I'd only just been introduced to Chin and Chapman and, and I did have Funny Funny and I said it would be great you know if you put your voices on Funny Funny. I've got a song that would be of great interest. Why don't you come over to my flat over the weekend and I'll, I'll play you the songs. So anyway, play them the songs, one of which was Funny Funny and there was another song which was also a contender. And they went, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll have a go at that. But we don't want to give up our contract with, with, with Air. Um, um, we'd be frightened to kind of throw away our, our, our dirty water until we've got clean. I said, no, no, have a go, just see how it goes. And the worst way, I'll give you a session fee and um, we'll, we'll call it a day. So they said, session fee, you know, seven quid each, eight quid each, great, we're there. So they turned up and they, they did the vocals and the vocals were great, absolutely great. They actually, they did it, did it credit. They really, really did. Worked it all out between them. It all happened very, very quickly. Mixed down very quickly. Done. Phil Wainman, basically, I, I'm sure it was Phil, turned around to Nicky and Mike and said, you've got a ready-made band here. All they need is a guitar player. With Phil Wainman's advice in mind, the band began their search for a new guitarist. After a lengthy audition session, only one guitarist made an instant impression. I spotted an advert, you know, it's the cliché, in um, a friend's melody maker. I didn't even have the melody maker myself. And I made a note of the number, made the phone call, went down to the audition and met Mike Chapman, who was stood on the door, who knew me, because he'd been in a band called Tangerine Peel. So he was like, oh, hi. And I said, can I go in next? And he's gone, yeah, all right, go on. So I jumped the queue, basically, and did my little bit. And I guess um, the rest is history. Well, we had hundreds of hundreds of, you know, you know, hopefuls, and they were just terrible. And then this guy walked in, and he had, he had balls, and you know, he kind of, um, you know, something about him that we said, well, you've got to give him a go. You've got to give this guy a shot. And he had the high voice. You know, he could get up there, and you couldn't have him near a microphone. You actually had to have him in the corner of the studio because we could pick him up everywhere and that voice used to sail through and that was not um, a, 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 a contrived voice, that was not a slow down and sped up voice, that was for real. Andy Scott made all them notes and yeah, he made the band complete. I remember the rehearsals very well, um, I think it was in a rehearsal room of Shepherd's Bush and you know Guitarist after guitarist came in and guitarist after guitarist went out. Um, you know, I mean, we really did see a lot of rubbish. Um, and then Andy came in and there was no question um, that he was the guy and he was the final piece of, of the jigsaw, without a doubt. All of a sudden, the, the vocal thing had come together as well because they were perfect in their ranges and then I had the high voice. So it filled the four the full, full range of octave and um, I could really see that, that we had something. With the lineup now complete and a new record deal with RCA, the band began their assault on the charts with the release of Funny Funny. A top 30 would have at least said, yes, let's make another record. Uh, probably a top 50 would have meant let's make another record because we'd have still sold a few. But when it went in the top 20, it was like you just don't know where it's going to go now. It didn't just dive in at 13, it took about eight weeks or nine weeks to get to 13, and it staggered up the chart and it kind of fumbled into the top 20, and suddenly we had a top of the pops and it kind of crept up the chart very, very. It was painful. But it was our first hit, so it was just magnificent to see it there. You know, it means I, could have t I, I took my moody gold record down that I'd painted myself and put a real silver one up. It was really wonderful there. I, I, we'd gone silver with it. Brilliant. The final part of that jigsaw was the fact that Phil, having found Nicky and Mike, actually now had a product with a lead singer that looked like Brian Connolly to push it and, and propel it and after Funny Funny 
we were all believers after this. We were thinking, you know, we're off, you know. <laughs>